today I'm going to be going over my latest mixed media uh, project in my art journal and I had this insane idea to try to do a whole project without using a paintbrush <laughs> which is a really dumb idea by the way my name is Karen Campbell and I am the author of the how to draw fun fab faces series which you can find on Amazon as well as in my Etsy shop and the co-author of the book for the color for teacher which is literally an awesome coloring book for teachers and I own awesomeartsville.com if you are looking for some endless uh, inspiration and additional free tutorials I am working in my favorite it's only favorite because it's my current um, art journal which I got for 25 cents at a local thrift shop and um, I'm just starting out today by slapping on some decorative duct, duct tape. I literally don't know what I'm doing yet. And I never know what I'm doing until I start doing it. And usually I start slapping around some paint or collage. And today I just grabbed literally my closest uh, roll of tape followed by washi that matched my roll of tape and I just started uh, putting it around. I actually put it on the edges and in the beginning to literally shore up this old poor book. And then of course the color is just, um, is just fun and zippy and I just matched my washi tape to my decorative duct tape. And now I'm matching my paint to also the same items. Um, I normally gesso first, and today I was feeling a little bit rebellious. I was already not gonna use a brush. So as you can see, I'm using a credit card. So I'm just slapping on some acrylic paint. That's uh, Lucas Acrylics. Um, it's a mid-grade acrylic, and I like it. I normally don't like that it's transparent, but today it actually was perfect. Um, I'm using the same book that I used on my last project for inspiration. Um, it's a book by the author um, Loish, and um, I love her digital illustrations. And so I'm looking at the picture just to guide again, like head tilt, and um, there was a hand in there, so I thought I would challenge myself with uh, a little hand action today, which ironically, uh, I guess it's not ironic, Funnily, I put it in like the totally the wrong place. So when it's all done, you can see how like weirdly positioned it is, which I think is hilarious. So um, I had a very limited time today. My kids are home from Christmas break and I had like an hour. I sent my two youngest to go deliver Christmas cards around the neighborhood and my husband went to the mall real quick with my oldest. So I was like, it was now or never. So I literally was like, okay, okay, <laughs> this bang something out. <laughs> There's a weird challenge. So I, as you can see, I hair dried that green and then I just started drawing on top of it. This is a big fat jumbo pencil by Jerry's Artorama. I don't even know why I'm using it. My camera cut out, but here's the first part of my no brush. This is gesso. After I sketched out the face, I just slapped it on. <laughs> and I gotta tell you, I will not be doing this again. It is gross and really hard <laughs> to smear around. So, you know a brush would have been awesome I'm not gonna lie a brush would have been awesome and especially for like like her fingers are skinnier than my like chub fat fingers so it was definitely a challenge for sure and a dumb one you get terrible coverage but I was already like committed and I had already told my son I was in it to win it so I just did it so uh, that gesso was dried I never sh I don't usually show the hair dryingness oh and look I used these Ranger Dauber acrylics and they're like all dried out which is disgusting so I like slapped it all around and then I'm using the sponge tip to kind of like moosh it because I can't use a brush. Again, so dumb. So I have other colors. But these are like a few years old. I ended up opening them all up and they were all dried out. So I literally just tossed them in the trash. So I'm like, okay, moving on. I grabbed my gelatos thinking if you remember from the last project, you know, gelatos I like to use on top of my acrylics. You can blend them with your finger. But I think because my bottom layer was like so choppy and gross, the gelato layer was also choppy and gross. So I decided to just pour on some more gesso to like hopefully just create like a saw, some solid base of some sort. <laughs> um, which it did happen. So <laughs> this is like the prime example of just playing, messing around, not caring, just throwing it on there. Normally I dry my gesso, but while that was still wet, I, again, just am pouring on some skin color. 
I normally only work like dry into wet and today I had ended up having to work wet into wet because all I had was my stupid chub finger so <laughs> I really had no choice and it, as you can see it's kind of like mottled hunky effect but like it is what it is and I'm moving on so this time I actually grabbed a Stabilo all pencil in blue because um which I've never done before in my art journal. I know, crazy, I know. Um, and I just thought it would be cool because it matches the kind of blue like splatter paint behind her. Um, and I had never activated a blue Stabilo before. Come to find out it's much less like dramatic than it's black brother, sister, I don't know, friend. Um, <laughs> the black, as you know, if you've watched any of my previous videos, I use all the time and it's always like borderline hot mess crazy risky and also then dramatic and cool so um so the blue isn't like that which i which i kind of love good to know so okay so now i have those features drawn in there so i grab my gelato again i'm i'm using the orange i'm inspired by the orange in the decorative duct tape as well as there's a lot of orange in that page that I'm looking at she does her spread in like blue and orange so I thought well there's blue and orange in mine as well so I just started to moosh it in there and I added a little her neck was pretty bare so I just mooshed in some more uh, acrylic skin color as well and this is um, a little bit of a darker this is like a shimmery metallic almost peach orange color that I'm working into her skin next and at this point too I still kind of have I'm just playing I mean I really am just like slapping on different colors um, I know I discussed the last time I love to use digital images because I can't quite recreate I can't copy you know it prevents me from like directly copying somebody but I do like it to inform like she had a lot of blue shadows so I threw that's why I threw in some blue so it is educational to use that as a reference so again the finger painting should probably be kept to the five-year-olds um yeah because it's not as like freeing it's really kind of just gross <laughs> and at this point I just kept feeling like she looks like a Flintstone character with like her like 1950s 60s hair actually she looks a little bit like Carol Brady is actually and at this point I'm like oh dear god this is not okay <laughs> so um yeah and then I have this like streak going across her eye and I was just like all right you know this is when like you just commit and you're like let's do it this could be a hot mask but let's just push 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 through I um, I think probably like this project in my prior life I would just be like Woo! and I would stop I would dry it and I would pour black gesso over the whole entire thing but I have learned over the years to just like be like screw it let's just go let's go for it let's do it and um I think that's definitely the way to go because I you, you can come up with some unexpected and really fun results and you know what it's in my art journal literally who cares if it's not like you know the next Picasso's like greatest work it literally doesn't care I mean it doesn't matter I don't care so moving on she needs some eye color so again I can't use a brush so paint is right out <laughs> so I'm using the gelato to try it because that's like a smaller nib on it um, and then I'm also again using the blue for some shadows blue and purple always make good shadows just for like putting that out there and I do know that so it was it's not totally crazy um, I do love her orange lips right there um, and then of course it was like my black Sibylla was calling me it was like what you have to use me and of course I was like all right come here because it really is my best friend um, and I'm ready to dump some Mod Podge. I am so ready because I'm like, I need some pens. I can't use a paintbrush, but this isn't the no pen challenge. <laughs> so that was my loophole for saving this project. And this also is the thickest, <laughs> grossest layer of Mod Podge I have ever poured on a journal page ever. <laughs> but it does really do a good job of like sealing down all that tape because washi tape if you guys know like it does not adhere that all that well um, especially over the glossy duct tape so I, it does serve multi-purposes <laughs> now the last project you guys might remember I did like a real time like look how fast you can see this dry and <laughs> this time because that layer is 
so thick. Let's just say that was not going to happen. So <laughs> I started and then I just had to turn my camera off. And then it was like 10 more excruciating minutes and then 10 more minutes. And then I just was like, oh, forget it. I'm moving on. So as you can see, I actually, <laughs> I actually, she's not even dry. And I just, I'm like, I can't even, you guys know how impatient I am. And I was like, I'm just moving on. I'm just going to pretend that that's dry and move on. So the Mod Podge had like a wet on inside was probably still wet, but the on top was just dry enough where I could draw on top of her. Cause again, very limited time today and I really wanted to finish a whole project. So away we go. So I started off with the, uh, like a magenta colored pit pen by Faber-Castell that matched her hair. And then I just moved to black and I'm just putting in some, some squishes, uh, squishes, I don't know, sweeps of black to kind of give her hair like a little form. And I'm using, I have pit pens. A couple people asked me what set I have. I actually have just been collecting them individually over the years. And I can't believe, I've been using these for literal years and they just, and I beat them on top of all this other gross wet media and they just still work fantastically well. So I have a myriad of colors to answer your question. I just grab whatever floats my boat at the moment. I like to make sure I have some shadow, like oh, if there's a hair against her skin, she'll always have shadow there. And at this point, I always am, I am using my reference to kind of indicate and inform like, where some shadows could go. So I do a combination of like in intuitive shadow painting and also what the other artists reference that I'm using is using for theirs as well. And again, I'm just using my black pit pen to like outline her because it's super satisfying to get all those out outlines in and I am also equally in love with drawing as I am painting so I always try to make sure I have a good 50 50 spread of painting and drawing in all of my journal spreads because then that just makes me the happiest person in the world so I just outlined everything with a straight up black pit pen and just um, and then I'm moving to this orange. I, that I was trying to give her like a cheek and I was not having it. So I just wipe it back with a baby wipe. You can see how slick that surface is. It does calm down once the Mod Podge dries. It is not that glossy. It is matte Mod Podge and it, that will knock back a bit. But I'm just throwing in some more shadows and trying to deepen the contrast. And again, if there is, if you're unfamiliar with pit pens, there is a window of time when you draw them on top of the glossy surface that they stay wet and you can smear them with your finger or, you know, a Q-tip or some sort of an applicator. I always use my finger. Um, and then they, they sort of set um, and you can erase them with a baby wipe, which is also kind of cool. But there's this kind of magical window of like wet and then they dry. And she is remains butt naked through the entire length of this video, which I really should have put like a top on. But I was thinking in my back of my head, I was like, oh, she's a mermaid or I don't even know. But yes, yeah, she's nude the whole time. Um, and I still don't know of whether I love or I hate that swath over her eye, but it is what it is. It does not go away. So. It makes our left eye like look like it's in the wrong place. I think it is in the right place, but it, it does throw off her like proportions, but whatever. Again, art journal. That's the beauty of art journaling, guys, is just do whatever you want. This is actually my pit pen in white, which is very opaque, believe it or not. Um, but then I switched to the Sharpie because it just has a little bit more juice and a little bit more vibrancy and opacity to it. Um, so I end up doing that for her real highlights because it really just punches out right nicely and then of course just put some streaks through her hair so you can kind of see make them pop a little bit this is my favorite step now i'm just taking the juice of that sharpie pen and i'm splattering it all over the page just because i feel like it damn it and um fully satisfying my clock is like ticking my kids are coming home soon so i'm in a hurry i do highlight her eyelashes with the Posca pen, but it was too wet and juicy. So then I have to go back over it with my pit and kind of knock those back again. That's the second time that's happened to me. That normally is not a problem, but again, you just live and learn and adapt and just try to always tell yourself, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just have fun and play. And like, who cares if it's not perfect and try different things. So I'm kind of like highlighting her cheekbone and then I was like too much. So then I went back with the black and you can always fix things and scooch things around trying to give her hand a little bit of depth, sort of using the pit pens to just deepen and darken that color. 
getting her naked chest <laughs> dressed and just taking that blue this is a light blue gray this is actually a great shadow color to try to again deepen and darken those shadows give it a little bit more definition to her lips with the black and darken it with that magenta it is good to step away from your work and look at it from a distance uh quite frequently i'm very very bad about doing that um because after when you're done it's generally too late to make those changes but um oh but she's getting her final layers there if you want help learning how to draw three-quarter portraits um my my second book which is how to draw more fun fab faces is an awesome guide it teaches you exactly step by step how to do three-quarter and profile female portraits just like this kind of whimsical ones um, and of course you can always use a reference as well so putting on some sparkly highlights here and there and we're just gonna wrap this up i hope you enjoyed watching this she's just getting a few more shadows and then what happens is you have all those layers of acrylics and gelatos and Mod Podge and pit pens and then what happens is when she's all done she has this sort of luminous kind of blending there with my finger she'll end up with this kind of luminous layered depth look and that is true with whatever combination of mediums you're using whether it's watercolor and color pencils or acrylics or anything mixed media that is the satisfyingly beautiful thing about doing many mediums together is you have this luminous layered sort of complex base work and you can make beautiful masterpieces. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Visit me at awesomeartschool.com for additional free tutorials and thank you so much for being here and for watching. Bye!